This is going to be a really unique video. <clears throat> Doing this video on the Bonson Shukai. Uh, I'm not going to go into a whole lot of detail. I'm just going to use a brief overview. For that reason, I'm looking at an English version of the table of contents on the internet. Uh, now, the Bonson Shukai exists in two forms. One is an Iga manual, the other is a Koka or Koga manual. Now, they're both pretty much the same either way. Uh, Ika and Koga Ryu were extremely uh, similar to each other. In fact, almost used the exact same methods. So, how much of what's found in the Bonsen Shukai can be applied to modern martial arts or modern ninjutsu study, taking ninjutsu as a study of covert and clandestine warfare. Now, it's important to realize that the reason why modern ninjutsu would be so prevalent would be because the former ninja who left these scrolls behind, whose art was dying, who left this behind for future generations, uh, left very detailed manuals about espionage and covert activity and clandestine operations and they left this stuff behind for the next generation or the generation after that or the generation after that to be able to pull this out to use it if need be and the thing with modern ninjutsu is all right, I, I don't work for the CIA I, I've never had any special ops training I'm not super spook so you know for me to get up here and to call myself a SAS commando or a Navy SEAL or anything else would be misrepresenting myself uh, to take concepts from ninjutsu and try to modernize it even with my limited uh, military training even my limited uh, training in like reporting field intelligence uh, would be considered a sit rep and an after action report uh, for being able to, to, to keep, you know, a documentation of, of an ongoing record of things, or an ongoing set rep, which would happen during CQ duty and stuff like that, would be a matter of application uh, for me to take concepts from ninjutsu to apply to that, which I've done for modern ninjutsu training. Alright, so I'm going to start with uh, volume one here. Uh, reading this off, uh, first one is Joe, Volume 1. Uh, there's a preface and a prologue introduction. There's a guiding philosophy to successful warfare, historical examples of successful warfare, an index of the contents of the Moth and Shukai, the other volumes, and a few questions and answers. Uh, then you get into uh, Sation, which is the correct heart. Uh, this deals with sincerity, motivation, and moral strength of intention and the correct approaches to life and death. All right, so you're talking about a philosophy towards directing where your mind and your heart should be in the way you act. Uh, then you get into Shoshi, which is uh, military leaders' wisdom uh, methods for managing a ninja organization, uh, commanding an espionage cell. Uh, successful uses of ninja, of espionage agents. Um, considerations for stopping enemy agents. Uh, you have methods for entering an enemy's base. Again, you know, stuff that has to be adapted to modern uh, times. Then you come into Volume 4, which is uh, Yonin, or the, uh, the, the, the shining, the, the, the bright methods, the methods that are done while observed. Uh, these include various methods for observing enemy intentions. So you see what the enemy is going to do by judging from his actions. Uh, continuous observation through agents uh, placed during peaceful times. Uh, location of agents after war breaks out. Uh, observation of geographical layout of the enemy's territory. Again, you know, this, this can be adapted to modern application. Uh, observation of the enemy's uh, force, numbers, capabilities, and other strengths. Observation of the enemy's strength and positioning. Um, there's uh, another thing here called the Eves Monkey, which is agents who specialize in watching and listening. So you're putting people in there who basically are in a stakeout position and they're just going to sit back and watch and observe uh, through modern, you know, uh, through visible application in disguise or what have you. Um, then you come into Inan, which is the shadow arts, uh, the hidden stuff. Uh, this includes uh, ninja knight attacking uh, methods, uh, Goto, uh, 
methods for mugging and uh, assailant techniques to, to make things look like an, a robbery or an assault, a uh, criminal activity, uh, methods of stealth, deception, uh, confusion tactics, surprise attacks, disguises, breaking and entering, sneaking in, uh, capturing the enemy, uh, betrayal, uh, individual fighting, uh, individual techniques for using darkness and stuff like that for fighting, uh, group hit and scatter tactics. Uh, you move into, um, and in it is actually volume five and six. You move into volume seven, which is uh, Tenji, which is heaven strategy. Uh, this goes into methods of interpreting the conditions of the environment, uh, weather forecasting, tide tables, moon phases, stuff like that that you would need to know, uh, especially moon phases for night attacks and uh, being able to judge weather patterns, stuff like that. Uh, Determination for directing and location by observing by the stars. Uh, divination, which I can pretty much do without. I don't put much uh, stock in horoscopes, but the idea of uh, navigation through the stars is highly effective. Uh, predicting future trends and happenings. Uh, and you have... Uh, Ninki or Ninja Truce, these are weapons and tools. Uh, you go into climbing gear and water gear, uh, uh, entering gear, breaking and entering gear, uh, physical dimensions and specifications for weapons uh, and special conditions, tools and special conditions. Uh, then you have a 10th uh, volume, which brings you into fire gear, which deals with explosives and smoke bombs and medicines and poisons and sleeping potions and uh, various other formulas. So what you're talking about here is there's all this stuff that for people who are interested in espionage or interested in like the, the spycraft stuff, who don't have access to that information, who don't have access to that training, you have this historical reference to give you something in this. And then you have, you know, the ninjutsu systems, which for the most part, uh, you know, I'll even go so far as to say that most of them are bogus because uh, a lot of different instructors make things up. A lot of people's uh, lineages can't be proven, so I'm not going to get into the lineage argument. Let's just say they're all bogus. What we do have is uh, a portion of things that are left over, and if we're trying to create these modern espionage systems, uh, for ourselves and we're drawing from this historical information and we're modernizing and adapting it, then of course it's ninjutsu. It's just uh, another take on ninjutsu. You know, I, I completely disagree with Anthony that it has to remain in the past, that it has to remain historical, because you can't tell me that, uh, you know, forecasting the weather by observing the, the, the halo around the moon, uh, is something that is somehow different because nowadays we have the Weather Channel. That it's no longer applicable because we have the Weather Channel. I can cut on my TV, but at the same time I can walk out in the moon and, and judge the weather by the halo, you know, uh, or the clouds of the morning. Um, you know, the the idea that I can make medicines from herbs isn't necessarily something that is gone simply because of uh, the idea of modern medication. i give you an example. I, I go hiking a lot. Sometimes I take a first aid kit. Uh, one time I didn't. A friend of mine slipped and twisted her ankle. She actually sprung it really bad. And uh, I gave her some, uh, I found a willow tree and scraped some willow bark off of it and had her to chew on the willow bark. Now, I didn't have a first aid kit, so I didn't have any Tylenol or aspirin or anything like that on me. And I used the willow bark because it contains uh, a raw form of aspirin and had her to, to chew on it and suck on the juice uh, from it. And it eased up the pain in her ankle. Uh, you know, not a lot. didn't completely take it away. But it eased it up enough to be somewhat tolerable to, to hobble her way back down the trail with me supporting her uh, a little bit easier than what it would have been if she hadn't have done it. And I've used, uh, you know, herbs like, uh, for example, plankton. Uh, one, I've injured myself out in the woods. Um, 
And simply knowing about those things is great to have because I don't need to rely on medication or first aid kits because I have this alternative way of uh, using certain things and, and knowing that they're out there. So I don't see how it would be not applicable to not apply the other stuff or, or to rely on the other stuff to modernize and adapt it to situations which help me, especially when you're talking about uh, ideas on being able to predict a person's actions, being able to understand their intention by not what they say but what they do, uh, things of that nature which are of a great deal of importance, especially when you're dealing with things like negotiation or um, trouble with the law. So, uh, yeah, that's uh, just my little thoughts here on how the Bonds and Chuka and how much the Bonds and Chuka is applicable to modern application with a little bit of adaptation from the individual.